I know you're at the point of no more. You're just tired of the old way, no more. The problem is, how do you get out of it? How do you go beyond? Because so many times when you've tried, it's like a big rubber band tied around your waist, and you're walking on, just like the series, and you're walking on, and whoa, you just get pulled right back into mass consciousness, into old patterns. So today we have to do some very disruptive energies. Question of the day. What percent of your time and energy do you spend on self-judgment, self-assessment, self-criticism? Five to ten percent. I can't put a number on it, but it's too much still. Uh, I think that similarly, like 30, 40 percent. I guess 60 percent or so. For each and every one of you, 100 percent. Because every thought that you have is laced with a degree of judgment. Whether it actually comes out or not, uh, I don't know, but it's laced with it. You can't fight it. You, you cannot overcome your thoughts. You can and, you can go beyond, say, you know, okay, Adamus bastard said that I, all my thoughts are crap, and I'm going to go over here to the point where they're not. I don't need the self-judgment, the self-criticism. It doesn't get you anywhere. It does not make you a better person. It does not make you more socially correct. It does not make you more disciplined. It does not make you feel better. It does not make you wealthier. It does not keep you from being an addict or an idiot or anything else. It doesn't. You're not going to overcome that crap from within. You're not. And that's, it's actually like using criticism to, uh, to try to wipe out criticism. You still nets out a criticism. Using judgment about yourself or you know, attacking your own self-judgment with more self-judgment, you still end up at the end of the day with a lot of self-judgment. So you and it. You say, that's part of me. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Interesting. And I'm over here. I don't need that. It doesn't get me anywhere. That's just a part of me, an expression of me, but it's not all of me. Okay, second question. Good deep breath with this one. What is Satan's greatest accomplishment? That I will go to him when I die. He kicked me out of bed. <laughs> Satan is here for all of us. Now I'm a little confused on the Satan thing. Well, he does that, you know. <laughs> Satan confuses of, you. Yeah. Of what really is Satan? Getting us to this point where we <laughs> yeah. disbelieve, don't trust ourselves, don't love ourselves. Providing the scenario of fear, terror, yeah. panic, yeah. and it causes people to just stop dough in the headlights. Uh, and by the way, my answer to uh, Satan's greatest accomplishment, getting people to believe he exists. There is no Satan other than the ones that humans have created in their beliefs, and therefore it is. For, for someone, something to convince humans that there's evil in the world, that was a big accomplishment. That's something somebody or some groups are really proud of, that there's evil in the world, and there is not. And even you believe it, my dear friends. Whether you call it Satan, whether you call it evil, bad energy, dark energy, or anything else like that, the fact is that the biggest accomplishment of any of that was believing that it exists. And we can't go any further if you keep believing that. There's no evil. There's no bad decisions. There's no mistakes. There's no sin. There's no karma. Now, to some of you, this sounds basic, and some of you are saying, yeah, well, I already know that, but I implore you to look at your own life, your thoughts, your limitations, how this whole concept of evil, dark, or bad is interwoven into everything you do, and it literally shapes your life. There is no Satan other than for the people who believe it. 
There is no evil in all of creation other than the evil that people have chosen to believe. It's a tough one, because uh, whether you call it sin, evil, darkness, Satan, bad, uh, anything, uh, duality or anything else, it has a profound effect on your life, no matter how enlightened you think you are. Right. Write the word evil, and then, as most of you know this, you reverse it. And what is it? There are opposites, live and evil. One is taking away from the other, always. And most people actually have come to need that in their lives, that judgment, that assessment, that duality of the opposing force. But you cannot walk on still holding those feelings. You cannot. Freedom is the release of thinking you've ever done anything bad. It's releasing everything about uh, feeling less than you are. You're not free if there are still lingering shadows of Satan or darkness or bad in your life. Uh, many will philosophically argue, well, it's, it's an evil world out there. Look at the things. People kill each other. People steal from each other. People enslave each other. Yes, because there is a core belief that's been perpetuated, a core belief that humans are bad, and that there's a, there's a Satan, and that there's darkness. So what do people do? They follow the act of consciousness. There is, there is no evil. There is no power. And by the way, those two things are so synonymous in mass consciousness, evil and power. There is none. It's the biggest lie that's ever been sold to humans. And it continues to be sold again and again. Redemption, salvation, whatever it happens to be, it's all a lie. Power, darkness, Satan, all of those things are just lies. What's Satan's greatest accomplishment? Convincing people that he exists, and he doesn't, unless you believe in him.